it's such an interesting one with Trent because there is no doubt he, I mean, his creativity for a fullback mm. is un, unprecedented, in my opinion, in, in Premier League history. The amount of goals he creates, the amount of chances he creates. If you compare him to pretty much every other fullback, it's not just an, it's not just marginally in front. It's light years in front, which is why I don't even look at him as a fullback anymore. Mm. I genuinely look at Trent, and I I look at him as a playmaker. Now, mm. a lot of Liverpool fans are no, no, he's a, he's a right back because they want him to be seen as this creative right back. Mm. Uh, but I think Liverpool's system means that he doesn't really spend a great deal of time. He's not great defensively. No, he's not great defensively. But I don't think he need Liverpool don't set up to utilize Trent's. Defensive abilities. They, their system is set up to go. Well, what's Trent great at? He, he's a great crosser. He's a great playmaker. He he, he creates goal scoring opportunities. So let's have a system that brings the best out of him in that situation. You know, we'll get we'll get midfielders to cover his position, or, or Gomez will come across, or whichever centre backs on the right will come across, and we'll get a midfielder to drop back into a more into a more defensive role. Let's just let Trent have that free reign, and I don't think it will be long until Liverpool, and I think England will do the same thing. I think he'll be moved into a right hand side of the midfield position. I mean, Trent, not having to worry about defensive duties. Mm. That, it, I, from an, as an England fan, I mm. want it to happen because I feel like defensively, you've got one Pesaka, you've got Reese James coming through, mm. you've still got Trippier right now, who defensively could do a better job than Trent. Mm. But you want to keep Trent in that team because he's as creative as Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. He's fantastic. Um, he's got a lot of maturity as well in the way he plays. Uh, technically outstanding. Um, yeah, I, I always thought that they would push him forward. Maybe they're going to slowly do it. Maybe in like, I don't know, a few a few lesser important games, they're going to probably put him in maybe centre mid or even, you know, like in midfield like um, or right wing. But yeah, I don't think, like in 20 years time, do we think that he's going to be finishing his career as a, um, as a right back had? Oh, yeah. yeah, I love to know his value now. I mean, if the, if the boy at Man City was worth fifty million, um, he's val- Trent's yeah. valuation. Trent's valuation, uh, according to the leading uh, sports consult- global consultancy that most of the clubs use for for various things, is his market value is somewhere in the region of seven between seventy five and eighty worth every penny. Uh, million pounds. And and this is the point I say to people: like, I don't get into the debate him versus Aaron Wan Pesaka. I, I just think it creates a polarized and toxic conversation. Uh, if you're t- talking best overall player, um, I would probably go with Trent. I would, even as a Man United fan. But somebody there in the comment section on Hot Mike said, Trent gets into any team in the world at right back. My, my argument to that is, not if that team doesn't play with attacking fullbacks. Mm-hmm. Because not every team plays with fullbacks that bomb forward. Now, if you want Trent, if, you pl- if your system is set up for your fullback to be defensive mm-hmm. as their primary function, Trent isn't the guy you pick. Which is why I've said, I think that when you look at his career, is he going to be man? Is Klopp going to do a Fergie and stay at Liverpool for the next fifteen years and see out Trent's whole career? Probably not. Mm. Is the next manager going to come in and play with a system that makes Trent or makes the fullback positions attacking? The answer is we don't know. If 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 that doesn't happen, then you're going to see a situation where you're going to have to move him further forward because why? It doesn't matter. Forget whether he's good or bad at defending. I I, I almost think that's an irrelevant part of the conversation. Why would you put? In, why would you ever put Trent in a position where you're not utilizing a skill which is world class? You know, Kev, the only player that you could say this season has been better creatively than Trent is Kevin De Bruyne, and a lot of the time Trent does have to be in his own half because he's still a fullback, and there are times with the shape he has to be in that position. Can you imagine him just being the midfielder or the? I'm not even saying put him into the Mo Salah position because that's it's not really a winger in role anymore. It's more of an inside forward. But I think England need to create a system. And I'm not a tactician or a coach, so don't ask me how to do it. I'll ask Scully next time I see him. But they need to create a system where you, how can we utilize the attacking and creativity of Trent, but let Aaron Wan Pazako or Reese James take care of the defensive side of things? I think there's a, a real argument to set something like that up. But would you would you guys say that Trent should be, even though he's only what nineteen twenty? Do you think he should be considered world class? Yeah, by all means, because at the end of the day, he's producing on the pitch, isn't he? So. You know, it's not it's not because we we think he looks good or he's pretty or whatever. Like we like his football. So, you know, if you pl- if you're playing in a world class team and they're winning they're winning the, the, the major honours, then surely you've got to be world class, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, Man United won a treble and David May was in our team. 
on the bench sometimes. But I, I, you, look, teams, I think it's most people know, a, a good team can carry a couple of average players. I think you can, you can kind of do that. And you often see this when you look at someone like Pedro at Barcelona. He was good. Yeah, yeah. But when he left Barcelona, he was never, again, the same player. Why? Because he wasn't being propped up by Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, David Villa. He didn't have that same level of quality around him. And then also Chelsea was a new system. And that, that's the interesting thing, like I've said. Trent, I ain't got a bad word to say about him. Like Some people like to slag him off because he's not as good at defending as Aaron Wan-Pazaka. The reason I don't do that is because I don't, I don't think Wan-Pazaka is an average right back because he can't create as much as Trent. Often, when you get these anomaly players, I think Messi and Ronaldo, are, I, I look at them as not anomaly players. They score, their goal-scoring ratio and rates for the past decade in my lifetime, no one did it before that. You always had a player that 30, 40 goals in a, in, a, in a year or calendar year, two or three times in their career, maybe four. I'd never see people hitting set like 60s, 70s in a season. You know, Sonny, I say this with respect, you're a little bit older than me and Broads. Only by, by you or so. By, yeah, <laughs> by you or so, I know. Absolutely. You, you, dye that be, you dye that beard grey. We know that, we know that. But, I mean, do you remember it? And the reason I say that is, is I, I bet you don't remember players scoring. No one did. No one scored at that level. Well, I mean, left back and right back. Um, you know, when when I was watching football, um, wasn't you know, wasn't really wasn't really a major position on a football pitch, and hence why their values were less, and they was get, getting paid less. But now it's probably one of the most important positions on a football pitch. Um, the interesting thing is, if you put Trent in 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 United, how much further would United improve? If you put Wan Bissaka in in Liverpool, would Liverpool decline? You know, but you're right, but it's they, they would. Liverpool would decline, and they wouldn't decline because Aaron wan Pazaka is a bad football player. They would decline because Liverpool's system requires a, cr- a very good and very good creative fullback, and that's not Aaron wan Pazaka's major strength. Now, I think Jurgen Klopp could coach and, and teach um, wan Pazaka to be better at that. I think the coaching would improve it, but this is the thing. It's about systems, and it's about getting the right fit, and the reason I, I talk about anomaly players, and I go back to the point, is... You shouldn't compare any youngster coming through on the wings or strikers coming through. The dumbest thing I think you can ever do is say, is start comparing, okay, well, Messi and Ronaldo were scoring at this rate. Who's going to be the new Messi and Ronaldo? These boys have done something which is out of the stratosphere. They've almost broken the barometer. You can't measure others by their standards because what they've done is off the charts, if that makes sense. And I think Trent's doing that from a right-back position. It's amazing, and it's complete and utter props to him. But what we can't start doing is judging every single right back in the in the country in Europe by Trent's creative ability because the vast majority are never going to be able to do that. He is absolutely shit hot at it, and that's brilliant. But it's a case that that doesn't make every other fullback bad because that isn't where their skill set lies. And I think that's the the art what I see happening all the time there. It's like, oh, who's best? Well, it really depends on what your team's system is. Like Jose Mourinho would destroy a fullback like. Just say, take peak Jose, forget now. He'd destroy a, a fullback like Trent yeah. because Trent wants to go forward and attack and he doesn't let his go beyond the halfway line. But imagine someone like Juan Bazaka and his defensive ability in a peak Jose Mourinho team. Yeah, but Jose Mourinho destroyed Luke Shaw, to be fair. And, and Luke Shaw, when he came from Southampton, was, was a really good attacking fullback. <sighs> well, no, I think what destroyed Luke Shaw was McDonald's Pizza Hut. <laughs> you know, wimpy. I've heard he, he even found a wimpy and they've been gone for years. Um, <laughs> you know, Wendy's. But no, look, I get that point. Maybe, maybe that, that is part of it. And this is. Man United's problem has been for so long now has been that we've got a squad now still that is it's made up of four different managers' players. There hasn't been a manager who's been there long enough or had the right backing from the board to create their own, 100% their own squad. No one's been there long enough to do that. So you end up in that situation. I, I don't think Jose would have signed a Luke Shaw. The problem is that when Jose comes in, there's more pressing matters than a, right, a left back needed. So it's like, okay, he feels five, six positions are more desperate. By the time he gets around to looking at fullbacks, he's been sacked. And the same, the same is going to happen to Oli. By the time he gets around to addressing a few more positions, he probably won't be here. And it's a case of, okay, well, and then the new manager might not rate Juan Pazaka. He might go, I need an attacking fullback. Now, he might not rate someone like Maguire. I, I need more pace at the back. I mean, he might not rate Rashford. I, go, I, don't want a, 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 I don't want a winger that does that. And then it's a case of, right, back to the drawing ball. We start again. Man, Man United fans probably want to hear want to hear this, and you know a lot probably wouldn't agree with me either. But I don't think Oli's got the pulling power to attract the players, the best players throughout Europe, in my opinion. Why? Um, and, you, and 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 what do you think? 
I mean, no disrespect, Oli's a much, in terms of names, Oli's a much bigger name in football than Mikel Arteta. So are you saying that Arteta won't be able to attract names? Most probably not. I mean, Arsenal in a different market to United anyway. Um, so, you know, Arsenal haven't got the money that United have got, so they can't, they can't attract the names anyway. Uh, so that really ain't, you can't really compare like for like there. But, you know, before when Fergie wanted a player, you know, even even Van Howe or Mourinho, you know, you mentioned you mentioned those names and, and Man United, um, and they won't be they won't be they won't be arguing about um, price tags and wages and, and and what have you. But it seems it seems now under under Solskjaer and Woodward, in my opinion, as an outsider, I mean, I'm, I'm, I bet might be wrong, but deals are, deals are not happening, you know, and that's why United are just falling further and further backwards. <laughs> yeah, it's the situation at the minute with deals at Man United is a is another conversation that we'll have later. Uh, there's, I'm, I'm I'm so split. I'm I'm literally split down the middle with with those decisions. Are we pretending to be interested in these players and then pull it and and yeah, a bit like remember Arsenal's bid for Suarez? It weren't really serious. Well, the worst one, the worst one after that was was Lamar for ninety ninety two million. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the irony of that. I mean, how lucky were you not to sign him? He's absolutely flopped since leaving Monaco. Uh, that's the irony of those things. Like Arsenal fans kicked off. It's probably a good thing you missed him, but. Point I'm making is that a Man United putting in these bids, knowing that they're not going to sign the players, and using it as PR to say we're really trying, <laughs> or are we actually now trying to stop what we've been doing for six or seven years and continually overplaying, overpaying agents, overpaying clubs, underselling as well? Like Man United fans kicked off royally when we only got sixteen million pound for Danny Welbeck. You know, we only got like seven million pounds for Javier Hernandez, who had, had two and a bit, three good years at Man United, and we saw like like similar level players at other clubs being sold for. You know, David Luiz when he left Chelsea flopped at Chelsea first time round, and they sold him for like thirty, forty yeah. million. Mm. And then you've got someone like Welbeck who just couldn't get a game at United, who hadn't flopped, who was still young, and at the time there was still a lot of potential. Man's going for sixteen mil. You're thinking. Mm. So the point I'm making is, and that's where I my mind split. I don't trust Woodward and our board to make those decisions. But we have, we have digressed away from the right back uh, conversation slightly, and we'll get back to that a, a little bit later. But in terms of that, if you had to na- look at the young three English centre backs, Rhys James, Juan Pesaka, Trent. If you had to pick one now for your team, where it's Arsenal, whether you think it's Arsenal or your make believe team, you're making up in your head. Which of the three do you pick? I'll go to yourself first, Broads. I'll pick all three the way it's going, <laughs> <laughs> the way it's going right now. <laughs> no, nah, I think maybe if, if we're looking for um, defensive, defensive, it might have to be Juan Bissaka, but that's only d- due to defence. Um, Trent is good. Do I think he would flourish at Arsenal? Maybe not, because we need to focus on defence a little bit more. I mean, I'll, I'll be happy with either one. Yeah, I'll, one. I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you AZ Maitland and Hector Bellerin in, in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Maitland isn't even a fullback, and and Hector Bellerin. But that's the interesting thing with it. I remember when Hector Bellerin, yeah, but Wan Bissaka wasn't too, was he? He wasn't a fullback, was he initially? And he got converted. That's true. What I mean is that, yeah, but they're trying to convert Maitland Niles, and he just isn't, he just isn't good enough. But I remember when Hector Bellerin two or three years ago, he he, th- these conversations were happening about him, like top up-and-coming fullbacks and it's mad how you see these players who are raved about and then they fall away into obs- obscurity like I, I love when like newspapers do articles where they're like where are these players now and you go back and like somebody at work the other day mem- said to me do you remember Gal Gakuta Gu- at Chelsea yeah, 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 yeah. he was gonna be the, the new Claude Makaleli. he was this youngster he got a few games oh I wouldn't know where he is now like if I bumped into him in the street I wouldn't know who he is <laughs> But like raved about, do you get what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. you know, we've all had it. Arsenal, Arsenal have had it. You've got like the, the Willocks and the Nelsons and the um who's the lad just, just come back from loan? Eddie. Um oh, Kitty, yeah. 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 One of those three, by the way, in four or five years' time, you're gonna someone's gonna mention their name and Arsenal fans will go, Oh yeah, th- th- yeah. they'll be gone. No, they're saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well I remember when Awobi was was gonna be as good as Rashford. Uh, th- these things happen, it's it's amazing. We're seeing that with fullbacks. But the, everyone tuning in, whether you're watching on Hot Mic or if you're watching on YouTube, I want to know what you would, if you had to pick right now, if you're, not, if you're a Liverpool fan or a Man United fan, I know you're going to pick. If you're a neutral, which of the three, Reese James, Aaron wan Pazaka, Trent, for your team, built in your image and playing how you want your team to play football, which of the three would you 